Okay, Daniel Kerr here. There's a little bit of background noise. Um, no big deal. Um, I haven't done a uh, an ESX tutorial for a while, so I'm going to cover a whole bunch of stuff in a very quick amount of time. Um, just a couple of days ago, I released a holiday set for sale. This uh, is the video uh, in, that is in conjunction with the holiday free set so that all you have to do to get this free sample set that I'm going to be working with is to uh, go to the email address uh, in the description and send me a uh, send me an email with holiday free in the uh, in the subject line. The email is d-a-n-i-e-k-l-e-r-r -R at gmail.com, daniaclear at gmail.com. And you have to send me an email there uh, in order to get the set, and you have to put holiday free into the subject line. I do that so that I can compile a mailing list, which means that um, every month or so you'll get an email from me <coughs> um, basically showcasing my new set and my new... Um, video and that's about it I, I never uh, mess around with sending a, a bunch of spam to anybody or anything like that so I guess the first thing that I'm going to cover is um, well when you make a uh, well a lot of times when I'm making my my synths a lot of people are like oh the synths are grimy and disgusting where do you get those synth sounds a lot of times I, I just load up single cycle waveforms some of the single cycle waveforms are from the uh, Waldorf Q some of them are from the Korg Wave Station. Um, some of them are from <coughs> Adventure Kid uh, online. He put thousands and thousands of synths online. They're all just tiny little waveforms, and you just loop them. You can check out my other video on, on how to do that and whatever. But most of the sample sets that I put out contain, uh, contain um, synths that I made. And so uh, the easy part about this, and I learned this on carolinaudio.com. I think that's how you pronounce it. You know what? I'm going to uh, cover it with that guy, and I will uh, update this video with the, uh, with the email address, or uh, excuse me, the website address, so that you can check it out. But he's got some tips and tricks for the ESX on there, and it's very rare that I, I, I run into um, tips that I have never heard before, but this guy uh, schooled me. So... Um, we'll start with a sample, um, one of the samples I've got in here. I've got a whole bunch of samples in here, um, a lot of drum loops and things. Let's just take one of the drum loops. Actually, that's a, a nice little bass drop sample. And uh, what we'll do is um, I'm going to take the start point and I'm going to set it somewhere in the middle arbitrarily. And then I'm going to take the end point and I'm going to um, hold shift. And I'm going to go backwards. If you can see my face, hey, what's up? You go backwards until it ends, uh, ends up being just one. So it's a tiny little sample like this. Okay. By looking at it, I can see that the actual sample is now uh, 1,024 uh, pieces long. I don't know how they actually uh, size up the increments in the ESX. I think they might be bits. I'm not sure. But now it couldn't be bits because that would be a megabyte. But regardless... Um, it's 1,024 increments. Any sample, and this is something I learned from that website, any sample that is 675, <laughs> any sample that's 675 ESX increments long, when looped, will be tuned to C. So that's in incredible. I set it down to 675. I go to loops, loop stat, go back to zero, and... Off screen, I have uh, my PSR 36. It's in tune. So that's a, a good way to, to put synths together. You can put synths, uh, you can piece together single, cy uh, single cycle waves um, from anything. Vocal samples, water running over rocks, uh, my son interfering with the video, anything you want. Woohoo! And you can... Uh, and you can make synths that way. So, second thing I want to talk about is uh, notes. Um, many times when you're trying to tune up a sample but you don't want to put it into a keyboard part to make it fit chromatically with your piece or be able to play it, um, a lot of times I, I've struggled with trying to find the right amount of, um, of, of pitch shifting up and down to make a... Uh, a, a, a sample come into tune. Now, if you open up the ESX manual, you'll find out that when you are tuning, let's go to pattern, let's see, I'm going to go to pattern number 20, which I believe is a blank pattern. 
it is. Yeah, there's some drum samples. I'm going to uh, hold shift and I'm going to do uh, pad number seven. I'm going to clear the pattern so there's nothing there. And uh, this is going to be, it's obviously one bar long. I'm going to write it so that I can um, go down to the length and I'm going to make it four bars long just for the sake, write it again, for the sake of this uh, demonstration. Now, in, the, um, in here we have uh, zero, 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 which I always enter as blank space so that when I clear out a pattern, you don't get that annoying kick drum on the, on the four on the floor. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, make this sample number four. Um, 39, which is a synth. Messing with the start point because it fades in slow. That's another thing I should uh, I should discuss is how to get a good um, how to get a good fade in using the filter and uh, Angela envelope generator. A lot of people think you can't fade in the attack of a sample, but you actually can. Uh, I'll get to that next. Right now, this is um, this is. Let me plug in my other synth here. This sucker is tuned to C. Listen. Yeah, one second. All right, tuned to C. Now, if I pitch it up and down, how can I pitch it to another note, right? Um, here are the figures, okay? If you go up 12, okay, the ESX manual will tell you that a full octave up is 39, okay? So there it is. See, again, now it would think that going negative, it even says in the manual that negative 39 is a full octave down, but it's not quite. A full octave down is negative 40, okay? And then it's in tune. All right, back to zero. Here's what I figured out. Now you wanna, um, I'm gonna move kind of slowly for this just so you can write these numbers down if you want, okay? From C, okay? If you go up 12 increments in the pitch, you get the minor third. Okay? If you go up 18, you get the fifth. Oh, excuse me, the, the fourth, the, the next one in the, in the scale, the minor scale. Okay? For the fifth, you have to go up 24. All right, and 32 will give you the last note in the minor scale, which is two notes down from the root note. Okay, odd numbers, I know. It's weird how they set this all out. It does not uh, follow any mathematical... Uh, anyway, it, it, maybe it does. Uh, from zero, negative 19 is one fifth, is playing the fifth, but uh, down from the, from the uh, root note. Okay, and and uh, negative thirty-one is the minor third down from the root note. Okay, so that's good. Now, next thing here, let me clear out of here. Okay, from here, I'm going to uh, throw a, a drum beat on here for some uh, in the slice part, just so that I have some. Um, just so that I have uh, some reference for timing here. Uh, I'll use the arpeggiator to put it in. Okay, so there's the... Uh, I'm going to add some compression to that because uh, that's how I get my slice samples to pop. Okay, so there I have some timing. Uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to show you how to liven up a synth sample. A lot of these single cycle, uh, single cycle waves, they sound, um, they sound just a tad dry when you're playing them, and sometimes you can do some filter automation or use the LFOs to, to sweeten them up, and I'm going to show a couple of ways of doing that. So I guess for starters, we'll keep everything in C minor. Keyboard part two, I will load up a, uh, a synth wave, and uh, I'll make a long envelope tail. So okay. Not a very interesting um, 
sample. Uh, but here we go. I'm going to play a little piece here. I'm going to put the mic down for a second. Check it out. If you go over here to the pitch modulation, it's on pitch, and it's already at um, it's already at uh, uh, on a triangle wave, right? Which is their like so, uh, sign or something. If you go down to slope, right, the last one in the um, in the modulation type, the wave, the wave, waveforms, and you turn it up to uh, a, a fast speed, you can listen, mess with the pitch a little bit, um, and record it as a motion sequence. Here, listen. Does that sound good? Not really. Now you mess with the speed of the modulation until you find the sweet spot. It's just a little bit of a pitch modulation. And then add some, add, put the effects back on. Now that sounds beautiful. And of course there's always filters. So that's a good way to use the modulation to sweeten up your synth sounds to make them sound fuller, all right? Another thing if you want, and you can um, mess with this at, at Rando, but you can get it to sound kind of a, a pseudo unison if you put uh, one of the synth engines on pitch shifter, put it right in the middle, and then just uh, go down like to plus 33 in the, um, in the pitch, mess with the balance. <laughs> Like two synth sounds in unison, you can mess with the um, with the amount of pitch shifting of the second voice. Go up a little, change it to some delay. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to mess with is uh, I'm going to show you how to do um, use the pitch shift. For uh, use the stretch stretch parts and pitch shifting, um, actually not 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 pitch shifting. Uh, I'm going to use the show you how to use the stretch parts to uh, lock in um, grooves with your um, with your thing. Right now I've got uh, uh, with your current project. Now right now I have uh, <laughs> I guess I have to explain that a little better. In number 20, I've got this little sequence going. I'm just going to save it here, and then I'll go into my samples, and I'll find um, <clears throat> where I've recorded some, uh, basically, uh, drops, bass drops that I've created or messed with on the um, in Ableton Live. Now, check this out. Okay, that is in C. So it's going to match into my project perfectly. However, if I go back to the patterns and I go to number one, you'll see that I have a pattern here. The first pattern and the first one through four are in F minor. Okay. This is waiting for you. It builds up and it waits for a drop, right? The drop will be in number four. Okay, there's no drop there. <clears throat> so I take one of these that I've created. Let me find one that I think sounds good. Okay, number two sounds good. It's in C, as you can hear. All right, C minor. So, since my drop, uh, or since my piece is in F minor, 
I want to take uh, the C and I want to transpose it up five notes to C sharp, D, D sharp, E, and F. Okay, so I go down to the loop, uh, I go down to sample tune, hold down shift, and I go up to number five, and then I write, okay? When you get a full uh, bank of things that are properly stretched, okay, you can um, transpose them up and down and write them at will, and then they will fit into your project. So that is number 25, which is DRL2. If I go to the sequence in my stretch one, I will go to... 25 and I'll audition. Okay, now put it in here. These are 64, uh, stretched to 64. Now listen. Now it fits. <clears throat> That's what I wanted to show you. Okay, the very last thing I'm going to talk about is in this sample set, I have um, cr uh, I have included a template. Okay, now before I was talking about creating gr uh, templates for for glitching things out and using the motion sequence. If anybody has seen uh, this video, then you know what I'm talking about. There's a couple of more, and uh, what it does basically. Um, it allows you, um, this template that I've included allows you to throw a properly stretched um, sample into one of the stretch parts and then just mangle it with beyond recognition. And what it does is it uses the motion sequence uh, to pull it back to its original state every two bars so that no matter how hard you mangle it or glitch it, it comes back and it snaps back. And that gives a very, very good and effective way of, uh, of controlling a, a mangle, right? So right now, um, let's go to, um, go to number 11. <clears throat> On number 11, I have put the drop loops um, into a stretch part. Now listen to this. Okay, that's how it repeats. Now the thing about this is that if I get this started, I can mangle that beyond recognition and every two bars it'll snap back. So here's uh here's here's what I hear that sounds like. <laughs> Okay, basically the motion sequence is set that if I turn the roll on, it'll turn itself off as soon as uh, every two bars. If I turn the reverse on, it turns itself off every two bars. If I mess with the filter cutoff, it snaps back to 127 every two bars. If I mess with the resonance, it snaps back to zero. If I uh, turn the modulation on, it snaps back to center or zero. If I mess with the pitch, it snaps back to center or zero. Um, if I mess uh, with the start point, um, it snaps back to zero on the one, it snaps back to 32 on the three, it snaps back to 64 on the five and 96 on the seven, right, in the template. Now, on, in this, I am using samples that are only 64, uh, 64 uh, increments long, stretched to 64. So uh, there's a little bit of augmentation that needs to be done here. Uh, on the 1, it snaps back to 0. On the 2, it snaps back to 64, which is half of a 64 stretch sample. Does that make sense? On number 5, it snaps back to 0 again. And on 7, it snaps to 64 again. That be that's because it's repeating. Uh, when those samples are shorter, uh, 64. 32 and 96 falls in a different place uh, in them otherwise there would be some repeating I don't know if that makes any sense but another thing I've done with this is in the motion sequence if you look at the effects I have on effect number one the decimator with some motion sequencing number two I have uh, cor uh, the flanger then the flanger is like a um, I've got the timing of the flanger way low and I've got the um, the depth pretty high so it, it kind of 
weirds it out a little. Number three, I have this short delay, sounding almost like a robot or vocoder. And what it does is uh, <clears throat> the motion sequence kind of jumps through the um, jumps through the effects uh, as the sequence progresses. That's for resampling purposes. Another thing that this is designed for is I have five of these drop loops, actually six if you count a, a different one that kind of falls into the category in the sample set. And you can, in real time, while you're in part edit, sn uh, skip through these um, different samples in the same spot. Watch what I mean. <laughs> recording anyway so the next thing that's going on here is uh, I'm going to show you how to use all of these things to resample a little bit I'm going to put the microphone down and we're going to recreate <coughs> hush my dog we're going to create an eight bar sample that is uh, <coughs> that's going to be suitable for the template let me show you how this works I'm going to put the mic down First, I engage record by hitting shift and record. You can see that. That means sample mode motto <clears throat> is what it says. It means it's going to resample what I do. Notice that I'll be skipping through uh, the samples as I play, and I'll be messing with uh, the different ways of, of, of affecting the sound. <laughs> Okay, now I have a sample. If I go to the samples, I can listen to it. Okay, now there's a little bit at the end. Listen to this. That needs to be taken off in order to make it a trimmed sample, so I'm going to do that. Also, when you do resampling, it should start right on zero, but you need to go to the start point, hold down shift, and go to one. That's the best way of making it work out. So uh, then I go to the end point, and uh, what I do is I, mess with, I pull the start point out all the way to the end so I can hear just the end. And I hold shift and go backwards until I get rid of it. Now this is a trim sample. Listen to this. Okay, now shift and 12 will, tr uh, 12 will truncate that, and shift and 11 will normalize it, which will actually add the 12 decibels. That's how it works when you resample. It's really weird, but you'll hear how loud it is now. Okay, and we will s write that. I'll write it to 40. Okay. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to go down to stretch step and we need to stretch that sucker out to 128 increments all right so that it's stretched that's obviously going to be slower because the internal tempo when you're in sample mode is always 120 i don't really know why that is actually i've been able to tap it out and make it different but so now sample number 40 is saved it's written it's stretched it's blown up okay so i'll go back to my pattern 11 and I'll go back to my uh, earlier pattern which I had number 20 right and number 20 is uh, that's that sequence I made a little while ago it's saved I'll go down to length and I'll make it number 8 okay 8 length and save it again now basically what it did is it took the uh, the sequence that I made and it uh, doubled it so now in the stretch part, I got the stretch part, there's no sample. I don't want to put a sample there yet. I want to go shift and three, which is copy part, and I want to go to D64, which is where I've kept the template in that slot, okay? It's important, pay attention, okay. Hit that, and uh, now I've got that template here, motion sequence is on, then I insert my sample, number 40. Right, and then I trigger it here. Every two bars, I trigger it. Remember that? 
So now when I play it, it should, with the motion sequence, play as, as I recorded it. Here, let me just solo it. Ah, okay. The tempo of the one that I recorded was 150, so it's going to sound best if I go to the tempo here and make it to 150. Okay? Now listen. Uh, microphone down so I can play. get the idea anyway um yeah I'm going to end. I'm not gonna play all the sequences that I've included in the sample set but I am going to tell you once again that if you send me an email at d a d a n i e k l e r r dania clear at gmail.com with holiday free in the subject line I will send you a copy of the sample set including the sequences and the template uh, I'm just going to end with what I think is one of the best sequences on the set. Have a good day.